Hello everyone, greetings and welcome back to the RSET webinar on applications of remote sensing to soil motion and evapotranspiration. Um, in this series of webinar, this is the third week and um, just a couple of um, points about homework assignment. Um, there is a homework assignment posted today and uh, this homework can be found on our website here. Uh, rsetgsfcnasa.gov and um, as we have said before uh, there will be a certificate of completion given to those who attend all five sessions and submit both assignments the one is posted today and the second one will be available at the end of the series so this is the website uh, where uh, you can find all the past um, sessions as well as uh, presentations as well as recordings and today's will also be posted online soon and here is where you will also find the assignment that you need to complete by 31st of October. This brings us to today's session uh, week 3 and today is going to be about accessing SMAP uh, data. Uh, we have a guest speaker um, Amy Fitzgerald and I have my colleague Erica Podas here from JPL who would be introducing her. So welcome, Amy and Erica. Thank you, Amita. Yes, today our webinar will be focused on accessing SMAP data. And this data can be accessed through the NSIDC uh, DAC. So that's the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And today's special guest will be Amy Fitzgerald, who works in the user services group of NSIDC. So she'll be talking about how to access and visualize SMAP data. So Amy? Please take it off. Thanks, Erica. Welcome, everyone, to session three, uh, Accessing Soil Moisture Active Passive, also known as SNAP data. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a number of methods for accessing SNAP data. SNAP data can be accessed from NSIDC, NASA's Worldview, and NASA's Earth Data Search. I'll, color, I'll cover all of these in today's session as I demonstrate how to visualize, access, and customize it. The NASA National Snow and Ice Data Center Distributed Active Archive Center, known as the NASA NSIDC DAC, is one of 12 NASA Earth Observing System Data and Information System DACs that manage, archive, and distribute Earth science data as part of NASA's Earth Science Data Systems Program. We distribute nearly 500 NASA data sets, primarily focused on the cryosphere. After introducing you to NASA's Worldview and Earth Data Search websites, I'll take you on a tour of NSIDC's scientific data search, where I'll demonstrate how to access and find detailed information about SNAP data. NASA's Worldview provides you with the ability to interactively browse global, full-resolution, satellite imagery and, the, and download the underlying data and image, image files. It uses the Global Imagery Browse Services, also known as GIBS, to rapidly retrieve imagery for this interactive browsing experience. Most of the 100 plus available products are updated within three hours of observation, essentially showing the Earth as it looks right now. Following my demonstration of SNAP data discovery and access at NSIDC, I'll take you through a tour of Worldview, NASA's Earth Data Search application connects users to their data by making data search, discovery, and access available in one application. Earth Data Search offers users the ability to search across disciplines and across DACs. It goes beyond offering the ordering and downloading of data by providing subsetting services as well. From my last live demonstration of the day, I'll go through the interface's search options to hone a search for SNAP Level 3 Passive product, followed by a look at the ordering and subsetting options available. So now we're ready to switch to um, my screen.
Okay, first off, I'll start out at the National Snow and Ice Data Center, NSIDC. And I'll introduce you to searching for and accessing SNAP data and where you can go to find more information about the collection as a whole. From the Select a Data Collection box here, I'm going to scroll down to the SNAP content, click Go. This takes me to the team pages where I can find information about this collection. Got a bunch of text here and a number of sidebars. At the tools page here, you'll see we offer a number of tools for working with SNAP files. Two of these, HDFU and Panoply, allow for easy viewing of the native HDF files. You'll note that also Worldview and Earth Data Search are listed here, so I'll go into those a little bit later. We also host a Frequently Asked Questions page. Here, for example, I can click on what data subsetting, reformatting, and reprojection services are available for SNAP data. This presents you with a table with a breakdown of what subsetting, reformatting, and reprojection options are available for, the, for all of the SNAP data sets. Now I'll go through searching at NSIDC for the SNAP Level 3 Passive product. At the middle search bar, I'm going to type in SNAP L3 Passive. Now click the Go button. This brings me to the NSIDC Scientific Data Search page. You'll see we offer faceted search options in the left panel. The data set results are displayed in the middle, the main pane. And we also have geographic and temporal constraints that you can search within up at the top pane. I'm going to click on the SNAP Level 3 Radiometer Global Daily 36 Kilometer East Grid Soil Moisture heading. This takes me to the catalog page for this data set. Here you can expand the version summary to see some information about the versioning. You'll see also that there's an overview tab. This provides general information about the data set. The Citing These Data tab includes citation information as well as the digital object identifier, also known as a DOI. The User Guide tab presents you with detailed data about this data set, detailed documentation. You can expand the table of contents and jump to areas of interest. Back at the top, we'll switch to the Support tab. This provides you with information on how to connect with the NSIDC user services by phone or email. I'll go through the Get Data options now. There's a download button which will present you with FTP and HTTPS options for downloading SNAP Level 3 passes. The Visualize button which will take you to Worldview and I'll go into this further in a little bit. and the Package Options button. This presents you with NASA Reverb, our subscription service, and Earth Data Search. Some of you may be familiar with Reverb, but it's going to be replaced by Earth Data Search at some point, which is why the Earth Data Search website will be the final focus of my demonstration today. Now I'm going to, from the catalog page, open Worldview and tour you through that. So I could just click that here. It'll open in a new tab. I actually already have that open, so we'll just go to it now. When opening Worldview from an NSIDC dataset catalog page, certain bands of the product will be shown already as overlays. They come preloaded. For, pre, for SNAP Level 3 Passive, it's pre-populated with soil moisture, 
and the horizontal and vertical polarization corrected brightness temperature bands. I'll note that if I was to browse to Worldview in a browser, uh, it, it does have a different set of default layers when you first open it up. It presents you with a, a tour that we can close out of, and you can see it has different base layers by default. I'm going to go back to the world view from NSIDC with the preloaded layers. And we'll go on a, I'll give you a quick tour of the layout. And the upper left pane here, we have layers, events, and data tabs. The layers tab lets you manipulate existing layers. You can change the draw order if you were so inclined to do so. I'll put it back to the way it was. You can add new layers with the Add Layers button as well. If you were to click on this slider bar symbol, it'll open a dialog that lets you change the layer's opacity, thresholds, and color palette. I'll click the X to close this. You can also turn layers off or on by clicking on the eye symbol over to the left. You can remove a layer from the panel by clicking on the X to the right. I'll leave these as they were, though. The Events tab lets you add current event layers to the map interface. And the Data tab lets you pick data that you'd like to download. I'll also cover this in more detail later. The top right buttons over here include a Share Map button. This lets you copy and share a link to the map as it's set up. I'll highlight this later in my demonstration. There's a Switch Projection button. I can change to an Arctic view, an Antarctic view, or back to Geographic. There's a snapshot button, which enables you to take a snapshot of the map as you have it set up. Click it here. So see, you can adjust the resolution, the output format, and whether you would like to have a world file delivered with the image. You can adjust the size of the area that you capture in the snapshot. If the download button becomes inactive, as, as I've got it here, you'll notice that there is a maximum size of 250 megabytes. So if you encounter this, um, it's easiest to either just change your resolution, or you could change your, your size of the area you want to take a snapshot of. But then if I click download, it would, it would download just this image of the, of the interface. The information button provides you with a menu where you can choose to send feedback, oops, send feedback, start a tour of Worldview, see what's new in Worldview, look at the source code, or read more about Worldview and the Global Imagery Browse services. buttons just below are the zoom in and zoom out. You can click on those. Or you also have the ability to zoom dynamically with your mouse's scroll wheel. You like that. Clicking and drag will pan you through the map interface. You can also hold the shift button down as you drag a, a rectangle. And this will zoom you into an area. the lower part of the page here, you'll see our timeline widget. This allows you to alter the temporal settings of the layers in the map. It consists of a date picker on the left, and up the month, the year, or the day. You can advance by a day or at a time with the forward and back arrows. There's also a slider bar 
which allows you to dynamically change the date. The smallest increment shown on the slider bar is controlled by this menu on the right, where I can choose days, months, or years. I'm going to go back to days. And with the cursor active in the map, you'll see that I can change from decimal degrees, clicking on the, the stacked arrow symbol, and change to degrees, minutes, seconds. I'm going to go back to decimal degrees. Now I'll give you a quick tour of the Add Layers dialog. So we'll click this Add Layers button. You'll see there are two tabs available, the Hazards and Disasters applications and Science Disciplines. This map can be found on the Science Disciplines tab under Terrestrial Hydrosphere. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to expand the Soil Moisture category, which contains all of this map data sets. Here you can change the product you're looking at. I'll click the SNAP radiometer. You'll see that soil moisture level 3 passive is already ticked since that's the current that's currently in our layers. Clicking the ellipsis down here reveals more information about all of the radiometer data sets. At the top of the Add Layers button, or panel, is a free text search option that can also be used to search for layers to add to the map. I'm going to go back to the categories, and I'm going to choose the other category and expand Reference Map. What I want to do here, I've already got a coastline layer, but I would like a little more detail. So I'm going to change to include the coastlines, borders, and roads layer. And I'm going to remove the, the initial coastlines. I'm doing this because I want to see the state boundaries over the US. I'm going to run through a scenario now to visualize soil moisture over a couple of days about a year apart. I live in Colorado, and I remember last May 2015 being so rainy that we seldomly saw the sun. This past May 2016 was generally sunny and dry. I want to see how different the passive soil moisture product looks between the two years. So I'm going to turn off the brightness temperature layers. And I'm going to scroll up to May 22nd of 2015. Now I'm going to advance a couple of days and a year to look at May 24th, 2016, which happens to share the concurrent imagery over the same part of the country. What I really want, though, is to see these two side by side. So I'm going to use the share link function to do this, although I could just as easily use the snapshot function. The difference lies in the snapshot being a static image, whereas the shared link opens a still dynamic view of world view. So if I go back to the 22nd of 2015, all I have to do is click on this to share, click, uh, the share map link. I can copy and paste this URL into a new tab. And I've already got that pasted. Um, and then all I'd have to do is advance again to my second day. May 24th of 2016. Repeat the procedure, copy and paste this into a new tab. I'm going to show you those now. So here I've, I've dragged the two tabs from those links side by side to just get a quick sense of the differences between the two dates on these two years. You can see that the soil moisture content was higher in 2015 than it was in 2016.
If I want to download the underlying data for this data set, I can do that from the Data tab. This Map Level 3 radiometer data set is the only selectable layer shown. Oh, whoops. Actually, it's showing the other bands as well. I'm going to go back and turn off. Oh, they are off. Up here where the radio button is located, the SNAP Level 3 radiometer is the only product available for download. You'll see that when I switch to the data tab, this little pop-up shows that the Bay Bay's file is available for, for May 24th, 2016. So I'm going to select that. I'm going to scroll back to May 22nd of 2015 and choose this as well. You can see that the page now displays that I've got two granules selected. Now I can click on the Download Selected Data button here at the bottom of this panel. And I'm presented with the pop-up with links to the HTF5 science file, the quality assurance file, the .qa, and the metadata file, the, the .xml. You can click the link to download the science file. Ask me if I want to save it. I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it downloaded. If you click the quality assurance or the metadata file, you'll see that it tends to open up in a, a new window or a new tab. If you want to download it, you can just right click on the link and choose Save Link As. We also provide a couple of bulk download options. The first is a list of links. This provides you with FTP links, instructions for using WGET, and instructions for using a free download manager. Similarly, I can click List of curl commands. And this provides me with the proper curl commands to use at my computer. And it also explains how to use Mac OS X and Linux or Windows to do a bulk download. So the HDF5 file that I downloaded is the entire file. It contains 31 bands. And I'll show you that in HDFU here. So when I open up the science file with HDFU, it shows I can see the embedded metadata as well as the bands available. And I've also opened the image for the soil moisture parameter so that you can see the entire file's data. This brings us to accessing data with Earth Data Search, where you can retrieve SNAP files in their entirety from our archive, just like in WorldView, but you can also hone your search constraints to return many files for download at once. You can also customize the files you choose to retrieve using services for reformatting, reprojecting, and both parameter and spatial subsetting to provide you with just what you need of the data you download. I'm going to pop back over to the NSIDC catalog page and use the package bu button um, and choose Earth Data Search to open the application. And here I've already got it open in another tab. Much like opening WorldView, when you open the data set from the NSIDC catalog page, Earth Data Search is pre-populated with 
the short name of our SNAP Level 3 passive product. If you were to browse to Earth Data Search, the page looks slightly different when you first encounter it. You can click to browse all data, or again, type in, as it says here, any topic or collection name. I'm going to go back to the Earth Data Search as open from NSIDC, give you a quick tour of this interface. The first panel on the left here allows you to hone your search using the categories listed, like features, platform, organization. The second pane is the collections panel, which displays available collections based on your search criteria from the top of the page and from the left panel. The top panel contains a free text search, plus spatial and temporal uh, search options and an ability to clear filters. It also contains a feedback button. Clicking this allows you to submit a question or comment. And the Earth Data Login button. And I'll get back to that in just a second. The main section contains the global map. The top two icons over here on the, the right side populate once you've populated a temporal or a facial search. The base layer options button allows you to change the look of the base map. You also have zoom in and zoom out buttons. Again, you can click and drag to pan. You can use your mouse to dynamically scroll in or out with a scroll wheel or trackpad. You can hold shift and drag to zoom to an area. And I'm going to zoom back out to the original view. The next set of buttons allow you to change the map projection from geographic to North Polar Stereographic. You can change the South Polar Stereographic. And we'll go back to the geographic view. Buttons below these are just button versions of the spatial search options for searching by point, rectangle, or polygon. As you can see, the same options are provided here, except you also have the option to upload a file, uh, like a KML, a KMC, or an Esri shape file. I'm going to draw a quick spatial rectangle to demonstrate the last two buttons here. Clicking this top one allows you to edit your search area. So I can drag and make this cover Africa entirely. Let's save that. If I decide I want to clear just the spatial constraints, I can click this trash can icon. Click my rectangle and save that. If you don't have an Earth Data login already, you'll have to register for one before you'll be able to order data. I'm going to log in now. And it's authenticating my username and password because it's already in the system. You can see that the interface looks slightly different. I have an icon where now I'm allowed to save my project, the same feedback button. But I can also review my contact information, recent retrievals, which is the same thing as an order history, essentially. I can view saved projects, and I can log out. I'm going to set temporal and spatial search filters and add the SNAP Level 3 Passive Collection to a project. And from there, I'll take you through customizing the data prior to retrieving it for download. I'm going to set the temporal filter to recurring. 
And I'm going to include from May 22nd through May 25th. And I'm going to change the year span from 2015 to 2016. Notice before I apply the filter here, we currently have 527 granules available for this product. Clicking Apply Filter drops that count down to eight granules. Now I'm going to zoom in over the state of Colorado. And I'm going to draw a spatial rectangle over the state. You'll see that the rectangle box is populated with the coordinates now. If I knew these off the top of my head, I could punch them in manually. Colorado's already a rectangle, so it's kind of easy to just use the tool. I'm going to add this collection to a project now by clicking the plus symbol. And then I'm going to view my project. You'll see this exposes a few more buttons for the collection. The information button, when I click on that, provides me with uh, more information about the collection. If I click the retrieve data button here, it would prepare all eight granules for me to download. There's also a granule filter button and a minus button. This just would remove this collection from this project. So what I want to do now is cull the eight granules down to just the two files I want, which were the same days we looked at in Worldview, May 22nd, 2015, and May 24th, 2016. When I click the eight granules text here, I'm going to close my Gibbs disclaimer. Should click that button again. So now you can see all of my granules are listed. If you click on a granule specifically, you'll see that its extent rectangle is highlighted in the map. You can also choose to download just an individual file by clicking on the Retrieve Granule Data button here. And in this view, also, you'll see another information button which, when you click it, provides you information about the granule or the metadata. Clicking the X symbol exposed over here removes this granule from my list. So I'm going to remove all of the granules except for the two that I'm interested in. And now I'm going to click the Retrieve, data, uh, retrieve Collection Data button. You'll see this presents me with a form with a number of select data access method options. I can also expand the click expand list and this will show me the granules that I'm getting ready to order. If I click the download button and click submit, Good. Try that again. Okay. Well, it looks like there's a problem with that. Let me try FTP. If I was to choose the FTP order with QA, I should be presented options with either pull or have the files pushed. If I have them pushed to me, a number of more details are required before the data can be pushed to my server. For either the push or the pull option, I'll receive an email when the order has been filled. If I had been able to successfully choose the download method, I would be presented with download leaks or a data access script. The links I would be able to click on and it will pull that file straight from our data pool to your computer. 
the download access script is something that you can download and run at a run at a shell or a terminal window to pull the files to your computer. And this is very helpful for large orders. You don't want to have to click 2,000 individual links. So I'll, I'm going to choose the SPL3 SMP.3 ESI service option here. This is the option that allows me to customize the data I'm requesting. I'll need to fill in my email address, which I'll do just before submitting my request. I'm going to reformat my output file to GeoTIFF. I'm going to tick this box to enter my bounding box. You'll see that this populates with the coordinates from my rectangle spatial search that I had drawn over Colorado. I'm going to reproject this to geographic. You can see I also have UTM and polar stereographic as options. And I'm going to unclick the top level to deselect all of the parameters. And I'm going to choose just soil moisture and vegetation water content. I'll pop in my email address and hit continue. And we'll see if this goes through when I submit it. Okay, it looks like it's working. This screen shows you the status. As you can see, it's, it's now completed. And it presents me with a link for HTML or zip file. If I click the zip, it'll download all of the, fi the files as I chose them to my machine. And I'll click on the HTML link and show you what that contains. So we've got a request summary. This shows you the service information that I chose to apply to the granules in this order and the granules that are output. There's also a text listing. This can be saved to my computer by right-clicking and choose Save Link As. There are instructions in the box at the bottom of the page here that explain how the text listing can be used. This is handy when you have a large number of files to download as well. The zip file shown here is the same as the zip file presented to me on the prior page. And I also have the links to the individual TIFF files that I chose for each granule that I ordered. Note that you'll receive one GeoTIFF for each parameter of each granule ordered. I'm going to download the soil moisture TIFFs. And for fun, I've put together a comparison of this data set as we visualized it in WorldView compared with my subset output files from Earth Data Search. Behind the scenes, I had opened my Earth Data Search output soil moisture TIFF files in ArcMap and tweaked them a little to assign a color palette similar to the one used in WorldView. You can see that the output files are spatially subset, these, these lower two images. So they're spatially subset to the extent of the Colorado borders. And they're geolocated. So when I add uh, base layers to my ArcGIS project, the output files pop in right over the state of Colorado. And this is in contrast to the full file that you would receive from downloading it from, from WorldView, shown at the top here. So this concludes my demonstrations of accessing SNAP from NSIDC WorldView, and Earth Data Search websites today. I hope it's helped introduce you to the options you have available for accessing SNAP data. So I'll hand my screen back over to you all. And if we can go to the last slide for NSIDC contact information and any questions. So if you have questions in the future and need any assistance ever, we're happy to help. Please contact NSIDC User Services via, via email at nsidc at nsidc.org or call us. Thanks so much.
Thanks so much.